and welcome to Thrift Miss, where I'm going to 24 different thrift stores, no repeats, and I'm trying to pull the maximum amount of value out of each thrift store that I go to. For this video, I will be checking out the ReStore in Gloucester for the first time. I did not know there was one here until I went to go visit my parents because I did grow up in this county and saw it. Uh, this one doesn't have clothes or books though, so I don't know what I'm going to find, if anything, but let's see. All right, so this is a first. I walk in the door and there are video games in a empty Coca-Cola refrigerator. They don't have books here, but they did have a ton of DVDs and CDs. And this is a snake plant and soil in a pot randomly behind a bunch of other stuff. Uh, there's just like empty totes. Uh, empty shopping carts with empty boxes in them. They're not like, I mean that shopping cart doesn't even have a handle, so I, I don't know what that's about. Uh, <laughs> here is your normal restore stuff, like electrical boxes and switches, and then a bunch of screen doors and windows of varying shapes and sizes. There are some little lampshades. I know that there's money in vintage lampshades. I just don't know enough about that to get into it. And I already sell enough glassware as it is. You know, typical restore stuff. And then I found the glass and ceramic room. Let me tell you, I sat on this floor for a good 30 minutes just trying to look at everything because there was just so much in this room. And it paid off because I found all of this. They want 50 cents for this. And there's my little pile. I did put a couple things back and here I am about to check out. Uh, that was an interesting experience. The store just kept happening. Like I would turn a corner and there'd be another little room with stuff. So I actually did pick up a few things. I'm, I was kind of surprised and I found Georges Briard for the third time for Thriftmas, which I find very funny. So. Let's get into the haul. All right, so let me show you what I picked up in Gloucester at the ReStore. This ReStore was so much different than the ones in Williamsburg and Newport News. It, it was giving very much country thrift store vibes, which, you know, it is, because Gloucester is much more rural than either Newport News or Williamsburg, so that's fair. We're gonna start off with something I'm keeping first. I actually legitimately only thrifted these to keep them. Uh, it is a pair of Libby stemless wine glasses. I didn't really care if they were Libby or not, but that does give me a little bit of faith that maybe these will last a while. I have mentioned before that I am a disabled creator. I have a couple of neurological conditions. Um, one of them has resulted in the loss of feeling in like half of my hands, so I have a tendency to drop things, uh, <laughs> which is why I use stemless because I actually I'm less likely to drop it because like I have good grip on it. I don't know why I felt like I needed to do the face there. Uh, but I've broken all of the stemless wine glasses at the boy's house. So I literally got these to have them at his house because I have broken all of the ones I brought over there initially. So that's what these are for. Now, I don't really have a whole lot of stuff left to uh, give away or I should not, let's not give away, but because I've bought something and I'm keeping it, I have been picking something else out of my life to resell. I've kind of gone through all that now, um, or at least I don't really want to look that hard. So what I'm doing instead is I'm going to list stuff for my death pile because I still have a huge death pile. Y'all know that if you've been here for a while. So we're going to check that off the list. And so for that, since I picked up two wine glasses, I am listing two books from my death pile. This is a children's book from 1959 called Tubby Turtle. If you did not know, super vintage children's books are actually mildly valuable. I like reselling, buying and selling vintage books. Again, if you guys have been here for a while, you know that. And the reason why these have value is because children have a tendency, if you didn't know, to color in their kids' books, or to chew on them, or to just generally destroy them. So to find these really 
lovely vintage ones in immaculate condition is exceptionally rare and this one is look at the artwork it doesn't have any teeth marks it doesn't have any crayon marks it doesn't have two jimmy love nana anywhere in it it is just a beautifully very cutesy like 1950 style illustrated children's book and it's in excellent shape. The pages have yellow due to age. Um, and of course, you know, the fact that the paper is not acid free. But this is absolutely gorgeous. The art style is just precious. So I picked this up at the bins when I saw it for 50 cents. So that's what this is for. Uh, I actually picked up a couple of them, but you know what? That'll be in a later video when I have to list those. So I, I'm gonna sell this. And then my dad's helping contribute to my death pile <laughs> because I went to Thanksgiving and he gave me this and he's like, hey, you sell books online. Here, I read this once, like in the 90s. You can, you can have this to resell. And I was just like, okay, dad, thank you. <laughs> it was the most random thing ever. So this is um, from the mid 90s. This is a book on D-Day because, you know, my dad is very much the meme dad where at once... He reached a certain age. He was just super into war, <laughs> war history. So there's this, uh, it does have some foxing, which is what these little, excuse me. Are you gonna show? No, my gosh. There's little brown spots here on the side. It's called foxing. That's what it's called in the book reselling world. It just means that it was kept in, um, a varying humidity environment with dust so that is this so I've sold this I'm selling this as well it is a first edition and um, it's other than the foxing it is in good shape so now I'm going to show you the things that I am going to sell that I actually picked up at the restore the first thing because it is thriftmas I actually did find some vintage ornaments these are shiny brights, but they're not the mercury gloss shiny brights. These are their Polaron ornaments. There are 21 in here. They all still have their little hooks attached to them. It is still in its original package. There are 21 of these. They're plastic and they're covered in like fine string. And that's what makes them different colors, but it's not really a good time of year for that but I found them and I picked them up. We'll see if they sell. The next piece, again, I thought it was so funny that I found a Georges Briard piece. None of them match, so they're all different <laughs> uh, at this restore. So Georges Briard, mid-century artist, famous for his ceramics and his glassware. This is a cheese ball tile with its attached knife still on it. And you just put the little cheese ball on here and then you have the thing that doesn't walk away because it's attached with the metal. I have never seen this before with a metal chain. So the guests won't wander off, but they can still serve themselves cheese and crackers. I thought this was interesting. So I picked this up as well. I have never seen that. I have bought and sold many of Georges Briard pieces. I have never seen anything like that. I see many of his charcuterie boards, but I've not seen one where the knife was actually attached to the tile. Um, that had like a nice little she shell pattern, so hopefully I put up some good keywords for like beach house or MCM, whatever, tiki bar, that type of deal. I also found these, but I found a vintage set of tiled coasters. These are like four and a quarter inches long. And I'm gonna put cottage core in the title, all that, because it's a bunch of different like uh, flowers. And they're really pretty, so cute. Putting cottage core in the title, and there are six of them, and they're all like, it's basically new old stock. And I picked this up because I figured I could sell them. Cottage core is still very much a thing. Also, foraging is a super big thing. I'm I'm super on foraging TikTok. So this is just a really cool little piece. So I picked this up as well, and I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of really pleased that I was able to find that there. So this restore had zero cell reception at all. It's another one of those instances where I couldn't text, I couldn't 
call. I couldn't do anything because the building was like this big metal building. Um, so there was no reception. So I did pick up a CD. Unfortunately, when I got out, I realized that maybe I should have left this behind, but I couldn't because this is Color Me Bad and I remember I Want to Sex You Up. Uh, I remember roller skating to that song when I was little a lot. So that's kind of why I picked this up. It's because I had that moment. But yeah, I, I picked this up. Maybe somebody will want to buy it for me, but it was a nostalgia buy and I thought it would be worth money, but there are several listed, so it'll probably be a while before that sells. I found restaurant wear there. Y'all know how much I love buying and selling restaurant wear. Although I'm pretty sure that this restore isn't going to smash and trash things. I'm pretty much based on the way it looked inside that stuff just goes in there and stays until somebody removes it by buying it. But there are four of these sterling china uh, bowls, plates. They're bowl plates? I don't know. They have uh, scalloped edges. They're like gold around and then it has a black internal ring. You have eyeballs. You can see that. But there are four of these. The date code on the back. So uh, a lot of the restaurant wear has a date code when it is created. So it lets you know what year and roughly what time of year it was made. This one is L4 down there. So that was, so that means these plates, bowls, whatever you want to call them, were made um, in 1975 and in April to June. So basically springtime. These are made springtime in 1975. So I picked these up even though I, I figured they wouldn't get smashed in trash, but because I found so many of them, I decided to pick them up. Um, the next thing was actually something as I was about ready to check out, I saw these sitting on a table next to the checkout and I decided to get them. I did consider keeping them for myself because I do love port, which is a type of fortified wine. And you generally drink port out of uh, little two ounce glasses like these are. This is a pair of Crystal Darks, Darkes, Darks, I don't know. This is the Longchamp because, you know, I can read and you can too. It's a set of four. They're brand new in the box. They have a Macy's return label. So whenever these were made, 2006. So these were $25 in 2006 when <laughs> these were for sale in Macy's. And I'm guessing it's quite past the return time. So I'm going to sell these online. Uh, I just thought that they were really cool. They're crystal. Again, thought about keeping them for myself, but they are going to move on to a new home. And then... I also picked up these because 70s are super in. This is very much on trend right now. Any, I've talked about this before. Anything with mushrooms on it is just selling. Uh, it started with uh, Stranger Things with the Merry Mushroom set in Stranger Things and it's just kind of progressed over time. Again, because foraging's becoming super popular, cottage core, like country living. Uh, these, I'm guessing, are also from the 70s, and I'm not guessing. It literally says 1975, so it's a second 1975 item. <laughs> I found I found two of these. I will be selling them individually, um, not as a set, because I feel like someone would just want one. But I'll put them up with a quantity of two, so if someone does want them, they can just select two and get both of them. But I saw these as well, and I, I figured I had to get them because... That kind of stuff has been selling well for me. I paid $12 for everything, which I thought was very, very reasonable, especially considering three of the things I picked up are new. Actually, I technically think these are also new old stock because this hasn't been used to hang it, to hang it, and then the stickers, the original stickers are still on them. So, you know, if I sell, the uh, crystal or the plates or the coasters, I will pretty much get my money back. So I really feel like this was a good trip. Probably not going to make it a regular habit to go to this restore. I definitely found way more awesome things than the other two, but it might be good if I'm going to go visit my parents 
to stop in there and just see if anything's different. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys tomorrow.